Hey, how's it going everyone? I just want to do a pretty quick lesson, just, um, you know, just sort of a brain dump of what I'm observing in the world. And so, um, you know, I've been sort of brainstorming more about flat earth and just, um, it's cool just in general, like I was up, up on my, you know, um, rooftop today and looking around and just, um, really the cool thing about flat earth is, um, you know, I just think thoughts that I've never thought before paid attention to and, um, looking up, looking out, looking around side to side and all that kind of stuff. And so it's cool. Just that in and of itself, you know, I'm thankful for, um, this truth, which I, which I feel is a gift from God. But, um, I want to talk about things now in the mainstream. And so this is sort of related to, um, flat earth, but, um, actually it's directly related to flat earth. I would say the strongest flat earth evidence that I have is, um, of a financial nature at this point, because the ma a major hurdle for, a, for a lot of people and even people who are on the flat earth side is how can a deception this grand be carried out and maintained, you know, for so long. And, um, to me, I have absolutely no, um, uh, issues with that anymore um, at all because I know that there is a deception on that scale and possibly even greater, uh, more day-to-day -day impact in the financial deception that is, um, I don't, you don't even have to be a CPA like me to know it. It's, it's obvious and that's what I want to talk about in this um, quick hit is um, I'm going to take you through three um, video clips, news clips that are all within the last like week or two and so, and I'll post the links below. So CNBC was reporting on March 7th, 2019, retailers announced 2163 store closures in 2019. So 5,000 store closures already up to that point, And that's more than all of 2018, uh, all of 2018. And so they're talking through it. People are like, you know, not a big deal. No worries. You know, the malls are all empty. No worries. <laughs> you know, just the, the strip malls will get filled with, um, you know, yoga studios and weight rooms and gyms. And um, the guy makes a joke that they might be massage parlors and then there's like an awkward laugh. <laughs> and so um, they're just joking about the fact that there's a very, very clear inflection point happening in the economy. And, um, you know, these stores are closing. And then even if things do get filled in afterwards, which a lot of them won't, um, the people who work in those places part-time uh, are typically, and I'm not trying to be rude, but in general, and I work part-time now, so it's like, but people at part-time us, um, you know, are rely on that income more than a person who, you know, has a full-time job and has had one for many, many years. It's just a different, um, uh, you know, personal financial situation. Generally people who are working in retail, uh, it would be part-time and then they would be I would assume fairly dependent on that income. And so that's an issue just immediately uh, for people in these over 5,000 stores that are closed. The next snippet, this is today, Fox Business, US economy is expected to slow down. That's the title of the video. So um, it's hilarious. So anything that gets in the mainstream news, it's been happening for a while. It's the same thing that I mentioned before on multiple videos about if mainstream is saying like, is a college education worth it? It means it's not worth it. You know, like you're already kind of late to the party. Um, and so I just think that's hilarious. It's like now all of a sudden there's this major revelation that, um, you know, US economy is slowing down as if that's something um, not known. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very, very obvious. And again, I just find it like Zero Hedge and other places like that um, would, you know, have been reporting this for, for many, many years, uh, Peter Schiff and people like that. But again, if it's reaching Fox business, Fox's 666 business, I mean, we, we probably should pay attention to this. And, and it's fairly to me, like sort of common knowledge if it's reaching uh, mainstream and then CNBC television gives us uh, a, a gem of information today. Central bank policy is what's moving markets higher, says expert. <laughs> and so I'm like, just three these three videos alone, just the titles. You don't even have to go in and listen to the gibberish that these um, um, 
financial pundits, these commentators uh, are, are talking, they're like, hmm, yeah, maybe uh, they're talking about everything except the fact that Americans are broke. The only narrative that makes sense as to why the stock market's going up, but stores are closing and uh, the economy slowing is that Americans are broke. And then the only last sort of highlight that we have in, in the economy really worldwide, uh, the economies worldwide is um, inflated stock prices, uh, valuations. And that's just strictly because like this snippet says, it's because of central banks, because uh, they're talking as if the market has its own personality and as if we're buying and selling. Most people don't buy and sell. Uh, and even if they do, they don't have the kind of money that could move the markets up and down. So it's obvious that it's central bank policy, central banks themselves that are doing this, uh, you know, causing the markets to go up and down. And so, again, this is mainstream news now, and uh, you don't have to uh, be embarrassed about sharing this. I mean, it's like right in front of us. It's becoming more and more uh, commonplace just in my life, too, like water cooler talk. It's not as taboo anymore to talk about this. It still is. People are still bullish and um, cautious about the things that they say not too doom and gloom, but it's becoming a bit more socially acceptable to, uh, to be bearish and to be worried really. And, um, you know, to me, this, uh, inflection point is clearly documented in these three videos, but like I said, these, this is mainstream news. So very, very likely this inflection point happened a few years ago. Uh, and my, my guess would be around 2014, 2015 was when things started kind of reversing course and then so the expansion of the credit supply you know has a limit you can't just print money forever and expect things to um just be great you know it's like if you print a vast amount of money it dilutes the money that's already been printed that's just a uh, basic economic fact and then if you only put that money in a certain group of people's hands and then um you know the entire economy is based on um you know, uh, a lot of it's retail, like just buying and selling, you know, goods. And, um, you know, a vast majority of the population has less and less money. Um, you know, the, naturally the economy would um, would, uh, would slow down, you know, and um, that that's what we see happening. And so those are the fundamental principles of uh, this quote unquote expansion up until what my guess would be 2014, 2015. And then um, it's very clearly, um, you know, inflecting. And, um, you know, the debate of like how quickly, you know, it will drop and like what the impact is and what it will look like is to be debated. Uh, the Bible actually, you know, uh, obviously from if you know my channel paints a picture of what that's going to look like. And, um, you know, to me, all this stuff will, will unravel fairly quickly just because, um, again, the nature of our, our, the nature of our economy and um, how expensive it is to live is um you know it's uh it's not anything that gives people a lot of sort of cushion in their life you know it's like there, there's many stats too about how many americans are living paycheck to paycheck and again that's a natural uh, outcome of um this type of um you know financial environment this kind of economy worldwide and so again to me this stuff is mainstream news i find it funny that you know ballers a lot of them um i would actually say in my experience a majority of them um just aren't don't talk about it you know they're just like it's not interesting but this is where to me it's becoming like kind of obvious and sort of slightly comedy even though again very very serious topics the, the economy is even more serious than the shape of the earth and i have even baller saying that the financial deception is not as uh, bad as flat earth deception and so like we're the ones who are enslaving humanity and stealing everybody's money uh, through financial manipulation. And so it's becoming very, very clear what's going on. I was on a hangout with um, a baller and they were trying to convince me that a plane would travel uh, from point to point on a sphere in a straight line. <laughs> and they were saying it with a straight face. And I was just like, whoa. You know, and I was, I, I really, I was just honest with them after. I'm like, you shan't, you shouldn't be telling someone like me this kind of stuff because you're, you're taking me down a path to convince me of ball earth, but you're making it more and more obvious that, um, you're not to be trusted, you know, in, in any way, um, especially if you don't understand the fact that you cannot join two points on a sphere 
if the sphere is Earth and uh, you can't travel through the Earth in a plane, obviously, uh, you can't connect them with a straight line. It has to be an arc. And so that to me, I was just like shaking my head. So again, I'm just saying this to kind of reaffirm to people, um, flat earthers uh, come to flat earth with a lot of different, um, with for a lot of different reasons. But um, again, to me, the financial deception, manipulation, the economy, the narrative that's being fed to us by the mainstream financial news, um, you know, it's actually starting to reflect reality and it's very, very negative and uh, very, very bleak. So to me, if other people who are claiming to have other truth, like the shape of the earth, but they're not willing to acknowledge what's now in the mainstream news, <laughs> to me, there's something else very, very wrong. They're shilling way, way too hard. And um, even CNBC and 666 News, they're not even shilling that hard. <laughs> you know, like they're, they have to they have to report, even if it's late or delayed, uh, you know, five years later, they can't they can't not report things that are just blatantly obvious to people. You know, I mean, you just like go around and see stores closing and more stores closing than are opening up and, you know, vacant, um, you know, um, spots in uh, strip malls and stuff like that. I mean, they have to mention it. And um, people are now wising up to um, the stock market manipulation because people are just like, hey, how come the stock's going up and like, I'm not seeing any of that, you know, and like, where's that money coming from? People are just asking common sense questions now. It's not, um, you don't even need physics or um, chemistry or mathematics for this. It's just common sense. And so the financial deception to me is a very, very good litmus test to talk to somebody about uh, anything um, about life. Because again, this is like just right in front of us, you know, it's just the same as this. I know this table is right in front of me. Uh, it's the same to me that, um, there is a financial deception going on worldwide. It's it's obvious. No one cannot convince me of that. And again, like I said, it's in mainstream news. So keep that in mind. And um, you know, I would use some of these kind of things as litmus tests to uh, decide whether somebody's even worth talking about. And then if you do, just you know, take it with a grain of salt. Weigh it against um, you know what else uh, they're willing to talk about and and admit that is. Uh, blat now blatantly obvious. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.